largely due to the fact that, I don't know if you guys are aware, that our Canadian political system was actually infiltrated by an SJW. <clears throat> He's also a trans rights activist and he happens to be a feminist as well, but he worked his way all the way up to the top to become prime minister of this country. <laughs> His dad might have had something to do with it, I don't know, but he, he's an SJW who got in there and he underwent a cultural Marxist revolution throughout the education system that has affected his, his ideology and it's now starting to permeate throughout society in ways we probably couldn't have even imagined. I mean, how many people here today on Canada Day, a day when we would sing the national anthem how many of you wanted the government to change the lyrics from an all of us command, an our sons command, to an all of us command? Did any of you guys want that? This government is constantly doing what the Canadian people don't want. Look at what, when COVID-19 came around and we have this tyrannical government running the show. <laughs> COVID-19 didn't shut down the economy. The pandemic did not destroy small and medium-sized businesses, guys. The Canadian government is the one who's responsible for and going against our civil liberties. And, you know, Canadians are fed up with it. And in the midst of all this happening, we have this uprising against the police on a global scale. And I understand that. I really do. I made a documentary film about the Canadian police state. Some of you may have heard of it. Into the Fire, have you heard of that one? Yeah. It documents the Canadian police state in, in great lengths. And uh, now we're starting to see it show up on our doorstep. So when I did that in 2010, and I saw a complete obliteration of our civil liberties and freedoms, I never would have imagined that just 10 years later, it would be happening, but even worse now. And it's to the point now where, I don't know if you saw it just a few weeks ago, I was at a, uh, a Black Lives Matter rally covering covering the, the protests and I was surrounded by a group of a couple hundred Antifa and they assaulted me and the police arrested me after that. Is that the kind of Canada you guys want? So, I guess the question is, what do we do? I mean, <laughs> the society has undergone, as I say, a cultural Marxist revolution through multiple generations through the education system. So I think what we're going to need to do is, is, is educate our friends and our family about the importance of, of embracing individual freedoms and individual liberties over, over this collectivist mindset. And we're going to have to do it <laughs> at great lengths through multiple generations. And in fact, we need more people on our side at this point. So I would say, go make some babies, everybody. <laughs> we need more like-minded people like us to be able to combat this current issue. So if we want to move towards a more uh, freedom-loving world, that's what we need to do. So educate your friends and family about the importance of denying this collectivist, collectivism mindset, this cultural Marxist revolution that is taking place in, in Canada. We got to we got to talk about the importance of individual freedoms and liberties and embracing that if we ever want to have any hope of moving forward with Canada in any kind of a good direction moving forward. So that's the message I wanted to bring to you guys today. Embrace true freedom and individual liberties and reject this BS cult of uh, collectivist mindset. Thanks so much.